Today's review is sponsored by Jim Bob's Milk. Milk so good, you'll wish you were a cow's tit. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Mr. No Legs, aka the amazing Mr. No Legs. This video is for my buddy Randy. He's a friend of mine who's a fellow Grindhouse fan. In fact, he was the first person to support my videos back when I started my old channel. In fact, quite a few of the movies in my collection are because of him, because of his recommendations. He wanted me to review this flick, so this one's for you, man. One of my favorite things about being a Grindhouse fan is coming across or being introduced to these weird standout titles. You do have your typical titles, of course, like Maniac, Eaten Alive, and Street Law, but then you have these titles that grab you, like Master of the Flying Guillotine, Switchblade Sisters, and of course the movie we're talking about today. <laughs> There's always the risk that the title's there just to get people to watch the movie, and it turns out to be something boring. Luckily, that's not the case here. Meet Mr. No Legs, a double amputee who also happens to be the deadliest enforcer of drug kingpin D'Angelo. Don't let his disability fool you. This is the baddest motherfucker to ever roll around in a wheelchair. It helps that he has two double-barrel shotguns built into his wheelchair. <laughs> Things start going south for D'Angelo's drug operation when one of his henchmen accidentally kills the sister of Andy, a straight-edge cop. Even though Mr. No Legs tries to cover up the murder, Andy and his partner Chuck are out to solve the case and bring down D'Angelo's drug enterprise. It's cops versus gangsters versus a wheelchair-bound hitman in this fun, low-budget crime thriller. <laughs> I was worried going into this movie. For the first few minutes, it looked like it was going to have the same issues that many low-budget movies have. I've come across quite a few low-budget B-movies that try to pad out their runtime with... nothing. You know the kind of movies I'm talking about. The ones where you can tell that the script didn't have enough for a full-length feature movie, so the filmmakers pad the movie out with tedious stuff. You know, like people walking around, people parking their cars, getting out of their cars, then walking into a building, unloading a truck with excruciating detail. At first I thought that's what Mr. No Legs was going to be. We do get some of those tedious moments in the first ten minutes. But once they start developing the story and were introduced to all the characters, it turns into a damn entertaining low-budget exploitation flick. Mr. No Legs looks like it should be a So Bad It's Good movie. It has all the elements of your typical So Bad It's Good movie. But there's so much effort put into the flick that it doesn't quite fit in that category. With So Bad They're Good movies, you're laughing at the flick. You're never laughing at Mr. No Legs. You're laughing with the movie. We don't operate that way anymore. Maybe we're getting soft. Are you letting me worry about that? You just hope that this Wilson punk's body doesn't turn up. I will say that the editing could have used some work. There are some awkward moments when we transition from one scene to the other. Breakfast time! Ow, whiplash. The acting isn't great, but it's not bad. 
you can see everyone putting in legitimate effort. There's a buddy cop element to Chuck and his partner Andy. The two have good chemistry, and we get some fun dialogue. Nothing spectacular, don't go into this expecting Quentin Tarantino level shit, but it's entertaining banter between our two heroes. Well, all the nice places in town, what'd you bring me down here for? Maybe it has something to do with the way I was raised. You were never raised, you grew. Here. You want mustard or ketchup? The harder the better. Of course, Mr. No Legs is the one who steals the whole show. What do we do with him? Leave it to me. I know how to dispose of evidence. If this were a modern-day movie, they would have just used visual effects to make his legs disappear, or they would have used some kind of practical effect to hide his legs. Not here. This was 1978. They didn't have your fancy, bullshit CGI. They used an actual double amputee for this movie, Ted Volrath. That was very good. That cop's a real pain in the ass. He only appeared in two movies, this and a documentary called Let Me Live in Your World. This guy is a badass. We see him doing push-ups on his wheelchair, he has shotguns in his wheelchair, he knows martial arts. This guy is more functional with no legs than I am with two. There's a fight scene where no legs is up against a bunch of D'Angelo's thugs, and it's just as amazing as you'd think seeing an amputee beat up a bunch of mob henchmen. <laughs> It's a literal ass-kicking. That's what makes this movie so much fun. You can tell everyone's in on the joke. The two things I think of when watching Mr. No Legs are Creature from the Black Lagoon and Flipper. That sounds random, but it's not. The director for Mr. No Legs, Rico Browning, played the Gill Man in Creature from the Black Lagoon for the underwater sequences. <laughs> He was also the writer and director for the TV show Flipper. Under the sea. He also directed a few episodes of Gentle Ben, a TV show about a boy and his pet bear. You can see the natural progression of his career, playing a fish man, directing the dolphin version of Lassie, directing a TV show about a gentle bear, directing a movie about an amputee hitman. What really blew me away was how good the action scenes actually were. Remember, I went into this expecting a low-budget schlock fest. Now, this is schlock, but it's well-done schlock. <laughs> Other than seeing Mr. No Legs kicking ass, we get a bar fight scene with the main character, Andy, and it's pretty well done. Not only that, but we get some good shootouts, and we get a very well done car chase in the climax. Good stunts, good crashes, it's solid. And I like how the movie keeps the suspense going. Usually in cop and gangster movies, the bad guys are always one step ahead of the good guys. Here, the bad guys are only a half a step ahead of the good guys. There are scenes when the villains are trying to dispose of some evidence, but the cops get there before they finish. It makes for some fun, tense moments. <laughs> I want to clarify, I was not expecting this movie to be as good as it was. I was expecting a so-bad-it's-good hunk of cheese. What I got was a movie that was pretty damn good. Not perfect, but an entertaining low-budget crime thriller. I like when a movie surprises me. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of about 16. The kills consist of, but are not limited to, stabbings, gunshots, and getting beaten to death by an amputee. Mr. No Legs is a good villain. He's so intimidating, and I respect that they got an actual amputee instead of using special effects. There are some editing problems, but it doesn't ruin the movie. 
Our two protagonists, Chuck and Andy, are quite likable. Their banter back and forth makes them endearing characters. The action is goofy, but well done. I was surprised by how good the action actually was. And we get a good mix with shootouts, fight scenes, and car chases. The movie seems like it's going to be boring at first, but stick with it. After the first ten minutes, it really picks up. I love how much this movie surprised me. It's not so bad it's good. It's just good. I'm giving this movie a 3.8 out of 5. Not a great movie by any means, but it's very entertaining and worth your time. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel. If you're new here, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like what I do here, or give it a thumbs down if you don't like what I do here. Leave a comment down below. Let me know a movie that you thought was going to be bad, but then surprised you by how good it actually was. This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. If I were ever killed by a guy with shotguns built into his wheelchair, I'd want that put on my tombstone.